Hello everyone. Our lesson today is about copulation and conception. In this lesson, uh, we will see what do you mean by copulation and also what do you mean by conception. So, the objectives for this lesson are, firstly, you should be able to understand the difference between copulation and conception. We will see how these two processes differ from each other. And also you should be able to describe the events of fertilization. As you know, fertilization, when the male and female gametes, they will fuse with each other. This process, it will go through different stages and many events, it will happen during it. So, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe these events. Then, after that, you should be able to describe the processes of in vitro fertilization and artificial insemination by donor. And at the end, you should be able to understand some of the moral and ethical questions posed by human intervention in reproductive processes. Firstly, we will start with ovulation provides a female gamete. What do you mean by female gamete is egg or we call it ova. We explained uh, in the last lesson. Now, also ovulation. We will see how ovulation it, it's responsible for providing the female gamete. Now, firstly, ovulation, if we want to give a definition for ovulation, we will say it is the process uh, it's the process of releasing the ova from the ovary. During ovulation, each month, an ovum is released from one of the ovaries. This ovum, it moves slowly along the oviduct toward the uterus. As we know, ovum, or the female gamete, it's unable to move by itself. But if it's unable to move by itself, so how it is moving or traveling from ovary to the oviduct and then to the uterus. So, of course, there should be something that uh, help the oven to move or to travel along these uh, distances. There are two uh, ways or two kinds of movement that it will help the traveling of oven. The first one, we call it peristalsis. What do you mean by peristalsis? Is the oviduct, the walls of oviduct are made up of muscles. So these muscles, it will contract in a rhythmic way. Peristalsis, it's rhythmic contractions of the muscles in the walls of the oviduct. So when these muscles, it will contract in, the, in a specific way, these contractions, it will help the ovum to move through the oviduct. Number one, number two, cilia. Cilia, the wall of the oviduct, it's covered with a fine hair-like structures. Okay, this cilia, it will move backward and forward. So this movement, it will push. It will help to push the ovum along the oviduct. This movement, the movement of ovum from ovary to the of to the uh, through oviduct and then to the uterus it takes 4 to 7 days so it takes 4 to 7 4 to 7 days for the ovum to reach the uterus it will reach this part uh, by 4 to 7 days during this time or during this period during these days okay the process of fertilization it may take place here in the oviduct you should remember that the process of fertilization, it take place in the oviduct. Then, copulation delivers male gamete. Now here we explain how the female gamete will be delivered or how female uh, gamete will be produced. The same in the same way, here also we will have male gametes, but 
we will see how this male gametes it will reach the female body copulation copulation um, definition a simple definition for copulation you will say it is a sexual intercourse now how this process it will happen or how copulation it deliver the male gametes before intercourse there will be sexual stimulation this sexual st stimulation it causes blood to flow into the man's penis now when the blood will flow in the penis now what will happen to the penis the penis becomes erect and hard enough to enter the woman's vagina and this entering will be helped by some fluids these fluids will be released by the walls of the vagina this is called copulation or we call it sexual intercourse so if we want to give a definition for copulation again we will say the entering of penis to the women's uh, vagina this is the copulation when the penis will enter the vagina now the tip of the penis it will be rubbed with the wall of the vagina this it will stimulate the stored sperms in the testis to be released now what will happen the sperms will leave the testis and then it will move through the sperm duct and after sperm duct it will reach through the prostate gland and seminal vessel when it will reach the prostate gland and seminal vessel these two parts will release a sugary liquid this sugary liquid it will help the uh, sperms to swim through it now at the end what will happen uh, as the sperm pass uh, along this tube seminal fluid is added to them and the complete semen what do you mean by complete semen well, we mean by it the fluid plus the uh, sperms now the complete uh, semen is ejaculated in uh, from the tip of the penis each time uh, it's like about three to four cubic centimeter of semen is ejaculated and this it contains about uh, 300 million sperms okay and diagram below illustrates how the male and female gametes arrive at the same time we have finished this one now after that after this process what will happen now the semen it's released into the woman's vagina now two processes it will happen at the same time when the sperms will start will pass through the vagina and then will enter the uterus okay at the same time what it's happening ovum will be released from the ovary this process we call it ovulation after ovulation the ovum it needs to travel along the uh, ov oviduct and then it will reach the uterus but the ovum as we explained before we said uh, it cannot move by itself so how it will how it will move now by peristalsis and cilia now the uh, ovum will pass through the oviduct if there will be sperms here now the ovum and sperm they will join each other they will fuse with each other and this we call it fertilization so the fertilization will usually occur in the uh, in the oviduct so if in the oviduct if there will be ovum plus uh, sperm now there will be fertilization now after fertilization the fertilized egg will start now we will call it zygote this zygote it will start to divide many times it will form a ball of cells okay now after that the ball of cells when it will keep uh, dividing to make more and more cells then we will call it embryo this embryo where it will go it will go to the uterus when it will reach the uterus it will stick to the wall of the uterus when it will stick to the wall of the uterus an organ will develop we call it placenta what is placenta placenta it's the organ that it connects 
the embryo with the with, with the uh, mother's body through this tube or through this placenta the embryo will get oxygen and food and at the same time will release the wastes through it so that was everything about producing the female gamete and male gamete and how the male and female gametes will join each other by the process of copulation here we have the events of the fertilization it was one of the objectives for this lesson we said you should be able to describe the events of fertilization now the events events of fertilization what are they firstly this big cell it is the ovum and this ovum it's surrounded by cell from the follicle okay follicle if you remember in the last lesson we talked about the uh, follicle now 300 million sperms okay will reach the ovum and as you can see all of these sperms they are trying to enter inside the egg or the ovum they are trying to penetrate the ovum but what is happening see remaining follicle cells are scattered by sperm here look at the the yellow one uh, they are the follicle but as you can see here what happened to the number of this follicle it decreased how by what by the sperm when the sperm are trying to penetrate it so they will scatter the uh, follicle then from these for example 300 million sperms only one sperm will be able to pass through the outer membrane of the ovum see now as you can see all of this now there is no follicle only sperms and then from all of these sperms only one of them as you can see look at this one only one of the sperms will be able to pass through the outer membrane of ovum then after that what will happen the head of the sperm uh, crosses ovum cell membrane after that this ovum it has a nucleus and also the sperm it has a nucleus now what will happen sperm nucleus and ovum nucleus fuse okay when these two nucleus with uh, fuse with each other now this we call it uh, fertilization after fertilization the ovum now we will call it zygote or you can say fertilized egg okay so definition for fertilization is the fusion of ovum and the sperm so these are the events of fertilization conception is the implantation of the ball of cells another meaning for the word conception is pregnancy okay pregnancy it's what is the implantation of the ball of cells about six days after fertilization after here after this fertilization now what will happen the cell it will this the zygote will start dividing when it will start dividing we will call it embryo okay so this ball of uh, cells after six weeks we will call it embryo then after that what will happen the embryo becomes embedded in the thickened lining of the uterus this this zygote or this embryo now we call it embryo the embryo it will reach the uterus and it will stick to the wall of the uterus uh, at the same time when it will stick to the wall of the uterus now the outer cells okay if we will come back here the outer cells of the uterus and the outer cells of the zygote will stick will connect with each other when they will connect with each other they will form organ we call it placenta as we mentioned before placenta it's the organ in which the embryo will uh, receive the oxygen and food from mother's blood and at the same time will uh, release the wastes so this is what do you mean by conception
infertility treatment. In some cases, the female will be unable to be pregnant. So, this is due to many difficulties, many reasons, okay? Now, how to solve this problem? There are two ways to solve this problem, which is in vitro fertilization, or another way we call it artificial insemination by done. Now, what is the difference between these two ways? In the first one, in vitro fertilization, or they call it IVF, the term in vitro means in glass, okay? And this is used to, to describe the procedure that takes place outside the body in some form of laboratory glassware. How is that? In in vitro fertilization, they will take ovum from female. This ovum will be fertilized outside the woman's body in a special kind of dish. Okay, not a test tube, although the technique is sometimes called test tube fertilization. Of course, you hear about this one. They call it atfal uh, anabib. Okay, this is what they mean by in vitro. They will take ovum from the female. They put it in a, spe a special dish. Then they will fertilize it. They will take sperm from the male and they will fertilize the ovum. Now, after fertilizing this ovum, they will take it and they will implant it in the uterus of the female. Why they will do this, Why or when they will use this way, they will use it if the female has a problems with the oviduct. Sometimes the oviduct will be closed. When it will be closed, that means the ovum will not be able to pass through it. And at the same time, if it's uh, closed, so the sperms will be unable to reach the oviduct to fertilize the ovum. So when there is this kind of problems, they use in vitro fertilization. Artificial insemination by donor, AID. Here, you need to focus on this word, okay? Insemination and donor. So, in the first way, here the problem it was with the female okay there was maybe there was a problem in the oviduct but in this case the problem it will be from the male how if a couple is unable to conceive naturally what's that mean if the male and female this couple they are unable to uh, conceive naturally what do you mean by conceive here it means the female will not be able to be pregnant. Now, due to the problem with the man's sperm, okay? Here the problem is with the man. Maybe the man he is unable to produce enough amount of sperms, or maybe he is unable to produce sperms at all. Or maybe the sperms that he is producing, uh, maybe they are unhealthy, okay? In this case, in this state, what they will do? They will take sperms from a donor, okay? Uh, this, usually they use it outside of Iraq, okay? There is a bank, they call it a bank of sperms. People, they donor their sperms. Then, uh, what they will do here? They will take sperm from the bank and they will put these sperms uh, or they will insert these sperms into the woman's uterus close to her time of ovulation. Now, what will happen? The female, uh, the female body or the ovaries will start to produce the ovum and at, uh, during the ovulation, what, will, what they will do? They will insert uh, sperms. Now, the sperms will travel to the oviduct and will fertilize the ovum here and then they will form a zygote, then embryo, then a child. So, these are the two main ways that they use it for infertility, to treat the infertility. Questions. Question number one, define the term 
conception, copulation, and fertilization. In what order do these events occur? Okay. Firstly, conception. What do you mean by conception? Questions. Question number one. Define the terms conception, copulation, and fertilization. In what order do these events occur? If we want to give the definition for each one of these terms, we will start with the conception. So, what's conception? Conception is the implantation of the ball of cells formed as the zygote divides. Then, copulation. What do you mean by uh, copulation? Copulation it's another name for sexual intercourse okay it's like when the penis enters the woman's vagina then fertilization fertilization it's the fusion of the ovum and the sperm in what order do these events have, uh, occur firstly there should be copulation in copul copulation the when the penis will enter the female's vagina the sperms will be released then uh, when it goes to the oviduct what will happen uh, it will uh, it will fertilize the it will fertilize the ovum so copulation firstly then fertilization and after fertilization there will be conception this is the order number one copulation Number two, fertilization. Number three, conception. Question number two. Question number two, it will be your task. Dear students, that was everything for this lesson. I hope you got benefit from it. Again, when you will finish watching the video, write a, write a comment or write your name. If you still have any questions, concerns, please write a comment or text me. Thank you and have a good day.